friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on the WW or the Weight Watchers Blue Plan. It's Monday, so it's another meal prep. I have three absolutely incredible recipes for you. One of them is in the slow cooker, so it makes it so incredibly easy to set yourself up for success for the new week. So if you're excited for today's video, please give it a big huge thumbs up. And don't forget if you're new or you're watching and you're not yet subscribed, I'd absolutely love to have you. Hit the little subscribe button and of course the bell next to it so you don't miss a single video. Don't forget to check out the description box down below for my newly released meal planner. It has been a huge hit that we are running low in inventory. So if you are interested in one, make sure you pick it up before it's gone. I use that every single week to plan my meals. My meal prep and my grocery shopping. It's just such a valuable tool. So definitely pick that up. You'll also find my nutrition coaching where I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions in both 30 and 60 minutes and personalized macros and calories, which is really, really important. You have to know what you should be eating every day to be successful on a weight loss journey, or even if you're trying to maintain your weight. So definitely take advantage of that service. Links and discount codes to everything I shared with you today, as well as all of my other favorite things are in the description box and last but not least my Facebook group a community that would love 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 to have you so head on over and join us so we have three amazing recipes to do we need to get our slow cooker going so let's get started week I'm making a blueberry sweet roll so we're making cinnamon rolls blueberry style and I'm pretty excited for this I've been wanting a sweet breakfast I'm going to pair this with a protein so that I have a nice well-rounded breakfast but let me show you what's in the sweet rolls we're going to need an egg sugar alternative of your choice in this container is monk fruit flour light butter a packet of yeast cornstarch lemon juice you can also use a fresh lemon and just juice it yourself powdered sugar i'm using the lakanto sugar-free powdered monk fruit this is my favorite powdered alternative you can pick this up on the lakanto website with 20 percent off using the link down in the description box so definitely check that out almond milk my favorite almond milk comes from the thrive market this is the organic thrive brand of the almond milk again that thrive is linked down below as well and when you sign up for either a one month or one year membership you get 25 percent off your first order and a free gift so you guys know how much i love thrive so that came from there and then some salt and frozen blueberries the recipe does suggest the wild if you can find it they work best for the recipe so let's make some sweet rolls so to get started the first thing we're going to do is add in our dry ingredients so i'm going to put in my packet of yeast this is the instant yeast fast acting you can also use regular yeast so whatever you have on hand one and three quarter cup all purpose flour one tablespoon monk fruit sweetener or sweetener alternative again that can be purchased on lakanto's website as well and about a pinch or a quarter teaspoon of salt go ahead and give that a stir you can use your stand mixer or food processor for this as well i'm just going to mix it by hand we're going to add lukewarm almond milk i put this in the microwave for 30 to 45 seconds just until it's lukewarm and one egg that i lightly beat with a fork we're going to add all of that in and stir to combine we're also going to add in the butter you can also add this directly to the dry ingredients as well and then i'm just going to give it another quick stir just until the butter is incorporated we're going to remove the dough from your bowl and set it aside covered with a damp cloth while we put together the filling for the recipe and this will give it time to rise just a bit so i'm going to pop over a damp cloth while our dough is rising i'm going to add my entire bag 
of wild blueberries. So you can see that these are smaller blueberries. They're just a lot sweeter. And the recipe, again, does call for wild if you can find them. I picked these up at Trader Joe's. And then we're going to add in one tablespoon of the Lakanto powdered sugar and then one and a half teaspoons of cornstarch. So this is a half. So there's a half, one, and a half, and then I'm just gonna use this spoon. We just wanna mix it together, get those blueberries coated with the sugar and the cornstarch. I went ahead and floured my working surface, pulled out my rolling pin. I'm just going to roll that in a little of this flour as well, just to make sure it doesn't stick. My dough is ready to go, and I wanna roll this out into a 14 inch long by about eight inches. Once your dough is rolled out, we're going to add the filling. So we're going to put that onto the dough. You want to leave it about an inch from the outside edge. So don't put your berries all the way to the edge of your dough. That way you can roll it into the cinnamon rolls a little bit easier. So go ahead and add all of your berries, again, leaving about an inch around the dough. Now we're going to take the dough and we're going to roll it up as tight as possible. Any blueberries that come out the sides, make sure that you're just kind of popping them back in. So go ahead and roll that up. Once you have it on a pan, because we're actually going to proof this for 30 to 45 minutes in a warm oven. So I currently have my oven preheating for about five minutes that I'm going to turn it off and that will give me a nice warm oven because it's winter here. So that's the easiest way for me to get a nice warm space to allow my cinnamon rolls to rise. So I'm just going to cut it directly in half. This looks so delicious. It is packed with blueberries and then each one of these halves will get cut into five equal sections. So I like to put lines to know where I'm cutting. One, two, three, four, and five. That way they're as even as I can possibly get them and then go ahead and give them a quick cut. Here are my 10 rolls. I'm going to cover this up with some aluminum foil and then this is going to go into the oven to proof and rise for 30 to 45 minutes. I just took the sweet rolls out of the oven, preheating it to 350 degrees and we're going to let these cook for 20 to 25 minutes. If you want the top to be a little browner, you can always spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. While the blueberry sweet rolls are in the oven, I added one third of a cup of the Lakanto powdered sugar, and then I'm going to add lemon juice to it, about three teaspoons worth or until I have the consistency for a nice glaze. You can also add a little bit of almond milk to thin it out as well. The blueberry sweet rolls are out of the oven. They don't really look like rolls, but that's okay, they smell incredible. I'm going to allow them to cool for just a couple of minutes and then we'll drizzle over the glaze and I'll be back to share points and calories. And here they are, don't these look so so good. That glaze with the powdered sugar and lemon is going to be perfect with the blueberry. Lemon blueberry is a perfect pairing. So each one of these rolls is only four smart points on all plans and only 111 calories. So like I said, because this is a sweet breakfast, I'll pair this either with eggs or some other type of protein but it's going to be absolutely incredible and it just cures that sweet tooth that I've been having for breakfast. For lunch this week, this is actually a slow cooker recipe, so we're going to get this started first thing this morning before we start on breakfast prep. I am making a slow cooker beef and barley soup. I love barley and I haven't purchased it or used it in a recipe for a very long time. And when I saw this recipe, I thought, 
absolutely perfect because not only is it 10 degrees out, it is winter and I needed some barley in my life. So let me show you what's in our soup and we'll get it started in our crock pot. First, you'll need about a two pound roast. So this is a grass fed beef boneless chuck roast. It is 2.2 pounds, so it's pretty close to two pounds. Once I trim the fat off, it'll be perfect. This is from Butcher Box. It is the best place to pick up grass fed, grass finished meat at the best price. You guys know I love Butcher Box. My order is on its way and I can't wait, but these roasts are such a great value in the box. I do have a link down below for $30 off your first Butcher Box. Free grass-fed, grass-finished meat, so check out Butcher Box in the description box, but we're going to use a roast. We'll also need a couple of hearts of celery, some barley, like I showed in my grocery haul. I couldn't find regular barley, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to use quick barley. And thank you to my wonderful subscriber who suggested putting this in just a little bit later in the cooking process since it will cook rather quickly. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I also have fresh parsley, an onion, sliced mushrooms, Worcestershire sauce, a little teeny baby can of tomato sauce, beef broth, minced garlic, and salt and pepper. So let's get started on our soup. The first thing I'm going to do is chop my roast into bite-sized pieces, slice my onion, and then a couple of stalks of celery. I forgot to show you guys, you'll need carrots for this recipe as well. I'm going to use these baby carrots. You can also use whole carrots. You'll just peel and chop them. The recipe calls for about five medium carrots. So I'm just going to slice these into smaller pieces. All right, let's put this soup together. The recipe wants us to add all of the ingredients to your crock pot. I am not adding the barley because it is the quick barley. I'm gonna add it towards the end, but I did add a crock pot liner. Game changer for cleanup, you guys. Definitely put in your crock pot liner. We need 48 ounces of beef broth. This beef broth is actually open and the carton is only 32 ounces. So I'm going to add what's left of the beef broth, which is about three quarters of the carton. And then I'm just going to go in with some veggie broth to equal the 48 ounces. It's not going to affect the flavor of the soup at all. I'm also going to add quite a big spoonful of pepper and equally a spoonful of salt. The entire bag of the sliced cremini mushrooms. I think the recipe calls for one cup, but I'm going to add the entire bag because I'm always up for extra mushrooms. We love mushrooms and I know Troy will definitely eat this with me because it has beef in it. And like I've mentioned, he gets pretty tired of chicken because we eat chicken a lot. Two tablespoons of warm Worcestershire sauce. I'm just going to eyeball that. Worcestershire sauce is zero points. In my bowl here, I have the cut up chuck roast, celery, carrots, and onions. I'm going to add all of that to the crock pot. Three cloves of minced garlic. So I'm going to put in three good sized spoonfuls of garlic. And last but not least, that little baby can, eight ounces of tomato sauce. And then I'm going to give it a stir. I just want to make sure everything is combined really well. Everything's mixed together. And then we're going to get this cooking for the day. I'm putting it on low for eight hours. Look how good that looks. Once it gets down to about the last 30 to 45 minutes, that's when I'll add in the barley because quick cooked barley takes only about 10 minutes or so to cook. So let's get this started for lunch eight hours later we have 46 minutes left on our beef and barley stew or beef and barley soup doesn't this look so good so i'm adding one cup of the quick barley for the last 45 minutes of cooking that should get the barley nice and soft and it will also help soak up a lot of the excess liquid since it's pretty runny right now because it hasn't had the barley yet to soak up that liquid so stir in that one cup and let it cook the last 45 minutes we added in the barley about 10 minutes ago, so I'm going to add some fresh parsley. I just roughly chopped that up, stir that in, and we'll allow that to simmer as well for the last 40 minutes. All right, our soup for the week is done. It smells absolutely incredible. Adding the quick cook barley at the end was a really good decision. You can see it's nice and cooked and it only took about 20 minutes or so to get it fully cooked through. And then I just allowed it to soak up all the delicious flavors. So this entire crock pot only makes eight servings. A serving is about one and a half cups. 
It is six smart points on both the green and blue plan per serving and only four on purple because you do not have to count for the barley, 260 calories. You could pop in your favorite cracker. I'm really excited for this. Like I said, it's cold here. This is a nice, hearty, delicious filling lunch. And for tonight, it's Valentine's Day. Today, I'm gonna have this for dessert with dinner. I am making apple berry brown Betty. I love a good brown Betty, and I'm so excited to make this WW and calorie friendly. So let me show you what's in our recipe. First, you're going to need all-purpose flour, sugar alternative. I use the Lakanto monk fruit. Again, Lakanto is linked down below with 20% off. Light butter, salt, apples of your choice. I'm going with these gala apples a fresh lemon, a big pack of blackberries. You could do frozen if you can find them. I couldn't find them at Trader Joe's, so I just picked up fresh. Some sugar cones, almonds. You could do slivered, sliced, whatever your preference is. Brown sugar alternative. The recipe calls for cinnamon and nutmeg, but I'm substituting the Dax pumpkin spice because this is the best seasoning pretty much ever. And this has all of those ingredients in there along with some cloves and honey. It is so incredibly delicious. I have this on hand all year long because I use it on anything and everything that asks for cinnamon and nutmeg. You can find this on Dax website. I'll link Dax down below with 10% off for you. Highly recommend every single one of their spices, especially pumpkin spice. start the brown betty i went ahead and chopped my apples as you saw pop them into a large bowl here i'm going to add all of these blackberries it calls for about two cups of blackberries which is probably pretty close to what this is i'm going to add in the juice of that small lemon and i also zested that lemon so i'm going to add in the zest one third cup of the monk fruit sweetener two tablespoons all-purpose flour some pumpkin pie spice i am just going to wing it and eyeball the amount that i'm putting in you guys know i like a lot of seasoning and then i melted down four tablespoons of light butter so we're going to add that give that a stir make sure those apples and blackberries are coated and be gentle with those blackberries because they can smash really easy yum look at this this looks delicious all by itself in my bag here i have six of those sugar cones i'm going to just smash them up i put them in a bag just because i thought that it would be the easiest way to keep them confined into one space as i smash in another bowl this one's a lot smaller than the one that our apple mixture was in here are the six crushed sugar cones so i'm going to add those we're going to add one half of a cup of the monk fruit brown sugar or whatever brown sugar alternative you're using another dose of the dax pumpkin pie spice one half of a cup of sliced almonds a pinch of salt and four more tablespoons of melted butter and give that a stir here's that mixture this smells so good it's cinnamon butter waffle cone oh my goodness it smells delish so to put this together i have about a nine by nine baking dish we're going with pink speckles because valentine's day we are going to put half of the apple berry mixture in the bottom of the greased baking dish and then we are going to top that with half of the sugar cone nut mixture now for the other half of the apple and berries you guys i can't believe how freaking good this ice cream cone mixture over here oh it smells so good so now the next layer of the apples and berries and then we'll top it off with the last layer of the sugar cone mixture is this really happening right now look at this this looks so delicious this is going in a 350 degree oven for 40 to 45 minutes we want to make sure those apples are nice and cooked through and then this topping gets nice and brown and crunchy brown betty is out of the oven i can't tell you how incredible my house smells i really wish you could smell it oh my goodness it smells so delicious in here this also looks equally as delicious so i'm going to break it down for you points and calories this is such a great dessert option you can serve it warm or cold with whipped cream or ice cream 
It is only four smart points on all plans per serving. This pan makes eight servings, so it's a pretty good size serving, 181 calories. That's all for a dessert. Like I said, you can top it with any of your favorite toppings, some caramel sauce, whipped cream, you name it. You can make this Brown Betty your own, but this is going to be tonight's dessert, and I cannot wait. Thank you for joining me on this week's WW Meal Prep. I hope you are as excited about these three recipes as I am. I can't wait for sweet rolls for breakfast, that amazing soup for lunch, and of course, who doesn't love a brown betty for dessert? I'm very excited for these recipes. They will be on my recipe website, which I will put right here on the screen for you and link it down below. You can always find my recipes there. I don't type them out in the description box because I put them on my website. So head on over there to pick up these three recipes and see all of the other recipes I've created. Don't forget to check out the description box for the meal planner, nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things, and my Facebook group. Head on over and join us there. That's the easiest way to stay in touch with me along with Instagram, so make sure you're following me there as well. So I hope you guys have a fantastic Monday. Let's make this a great week, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!